the ideal platform worker doesn't have any needs that are recognisable as human needs. They don't have a need to use the bathroom. They don't get sick. They can be dismissed at will and when they are dismissed they will go quietly. The platform economy is economic activity, labour, exchange of services that take place through digital platforms. I look at a specific subset of the platform economy called work on demand via apps, which is sort of what it says on the tin. The way that the platform is structured means that more work than ever is being demanded of workers for even less pay. And much of that comes through the sense of disposability. Uber drivers are expected to, on demand, have spot checks using a facial recognition software. Now, we know that this facial recognition software is much less effective at identifying black and brown faces. I was speaking to a driver of Bangladeshi descent, and at the time, he had had a flare-up of eczema on his face, which caused his skin to darken, which is what tends to happen uh, for you know, darker skin tones. And he failed a spot check of this facial recognition software. So he was essentially immediately locked out of his livelihood, his only source of income. And for three months, he was struggling to even get a response from Uber, just facing automated message after automated message, who as far as they were concerned, there were a hundred drivers behind him who would be able to take on the jobs that he wasn't able to take on. It was only when his MP had gotten involved that eventually Uber had enough pressure put on them that they actually reinstated him but he wasn't compensated. I have spoken to countless countless other drivers who have been in the same situation who were never reactivated. It's much harder for workers to unite in response to that instead they're sort of left fighting one-on-one -on -one battles with this massive multi-billion dollar company. The platform economy was born in the wake of the 2008 financial crisis, where you have a crisis whereby access to stable and secure work has massively, massively shrunk worldwide. And the people who are spat out of the of regular employment in that process are necessarily migrants, they're necessarily people in the global south, they're necessarily racialized minorities. And so that leads to a situation whereby these workers are having to turn to highly exploitative models because there is so little available to them. There are some specific things that would make workers' lives much easier, primarily things like workplace democracy, things like having workers be part of the process of how their work is organised. I think things like having a fair dismissal process, things like data transparency, algorithmic transparency, these things are incredibly important. But also much of these issues would be resolved if the broader structural inequalities that mean that particularly racialized workers are forced to say yes to these exploitative models, shifting that would make a massive difference. While you still have a workforce that is socially and politically disempowered, I think the problems are still going to continue to exist.